Welcome back and it's Fashion Friday here at France 24 and as always our fashion critic Jessica Michaud is here to tell us all about the latest news in the world of luxury threads. Thanks for joining us Jessica. My pleasure. And uh, you're going to tell us about how the look of James Bond has influenced five decades of men's fashion. Yes, that's right. Um, this year marks the half century uh, mark for the first James Bond movie back in 1962. Sean Connery became the first and some say the best Bond, um, the British secret agent with the License to Kill and who went by the code name 007. And this month, the latest James Bond movie, Skyfall, hit the screens, um, starring Daniel Craig once again using the successful Bond um, film recipe of sexy leading man, high impact action sequences beautiful femme fatales, and of course those memorable villains. But these movies have also had a real impact on fashion since their inception. James Bond style has really become synonymous with seek, chic suiting for menswear, elegant tailor, uh, tailoring, as well as um, a very sophisticated uh, style, and let's be honest, some of the best um, swimwear ever to hit the silver screen. Um, what's so striking about the Bond style is that it was so um, clear, the vision, right from the get-go, right from that first movie, uh, Dr. No, back in 1962. Now, um, the Bond, as presented um, in the novel by Ian Fleming, is a real aristocrat, a man who belongs um, to the most expensive and exclusive clubs. Um, he wears handmade silk shirts, custom-made cotton pajamas, you know, in the most luxurious materials. And in that first movie for Dr. No, the producers really couldn't afford a big star. They went with Sean Connery, who was an up-and-coming young actor at the time. And the director, Terrence Young, actually had Connery, who came from a modest background, um, wear suits that he had had custom-made for the designer. Um, for the actor um, by his own personal tailor, Anthony Sinclair, he actually asked Connery to go out, walk around in the streets in the suits, actually sleep in the suits, so that by the time they started rolling the film, the camera, that he would look comfortable in these very sophisticated styles. And globally, is this a look that's Instant, instantly recognizable, does it translate globally? I think a man in a good suit will always translate globally. I think that um, where the, the look of James Bond really solidified was in Goldfinger. Um, the Bond suit is a suit for a man with a real physique, a muscular man, somebody who's got a sexuality, a, a suggestive nature about himself. Um, that image, of course, started with Connery and continues today with Daniel Craig. Um, all of the biggest names in fashion are dying to get their, their products into a Bond film um, uh, from our Armani to Brioni, who actually designed all of the suits for um, Bond when Pierce Brosnan played James Bond, um, to brands like G uh, Roberto Cavalli, Givenchy, Gucci, Prada, uh, the list goes on and on, Oscar de la Renta, Versace. They're just a few of the bold name designers who have gotten their creations into um, a James Bond film. And the modern day Bond, who's the designer behind Daniel Craig's suits? Ah, well, that honor goes to the wonderful Tom Ford, who's been doing a great job really updating the Bond suit for Craig. Um, although, let's be honest, Daniel Craig will probably look good in a paper bag. Um, but what uh, Ford has done with the Bond suits is very similar to his own personal aesthetic um, for menswear. The suits fit very close to the body. They have a slightly 60s vibe to them. And the designer, of course, used fabrics that move easily with the body because of all those action sequences um, and fight scenes in the film, you really need to be able to move quickly. Um, this is the second Bond movie that Ford has done um, for designing suits for the uh, the, for the, the uh, Bond films, the first one, of course, being Quantum of Solace. Uh, and this time he created between 20 and 60 copies of uh, six different suits that Daniel Craig wears in the film, always, of course, with a, a sliver of a, um, a white handkerchief peeking out of the breast pocket. Okay, Jessica, and thanks for the reminder that I have to get out and catch that film this weekend. Ooh, I want to remind you something else. I completely forgot that later today, if you're interested, if you want to know more about Bond, there is a special dedicated culture segment on James Bond, um, including, of course, a little mention of all of those amazing Bond girls. So I have a little clip of that here if you want to take a look and see those Bond girls in action. Now move you on to the high street, Jessica, and H&M have launched a, a new collaboration with a designer label. It's described as a bold move for H&M. Yes, it is. H&M, of course, as you said, is a high street brand, and they've actually done an unexpected partnership with Maison Martin Mar Margiela, which is a very avant-garde um, design house. Um, actually goes by the abbreviation MMM because saying Maison Martin Margiela every time is a bit complicated. Um, the collection was launched in New York just a few days before the devastating storm Sandy hit the East Coast. Um, it's a collaboration um, that fitting 
critically took place in the Temple Court building, a gorgeous nine-story decaying city landmark in the financial district. H&M took over all nine stories of the of the building, and the shopping space was actually on the ninth floor, so you had to climb up nine flights of stairs if you wanted to see the collection, but it was worth it. The capsule collection is quite a large one. Um, there are 101 pieces uh, for the collection, 60 for men, I'm sorry, 60 for women and 41 for men. Um, um, at the party, the H&M the party was very much in the flow of the avant-garde MMM style. Um, lots of very interesting site-specific uh, avant-garde uh, art installations in pretty much every room. Um, and of course the collection itself is inspired by all of the codes that the MMM house stands for. Um, lots of trompe l'oeil, oversized um, pieces, a melange between menswear and women's wear. Um, but always, um, you know, with as this is high fashion, mixing with streetwear, the prices of course are much more reasonable. You're getting great design at an easy price, a great leather jacket from this collection will cost you no more than 300 euros. Um, the clothing will be available in stores starting the 15th of November in 230 H&M stores around the world. Okay, and you just mentioned Superstorm Sandy there. Yeah. Has there been any ramifications for the fashion world? Yes, absolutely. In the East Coast, um, there are really not a whole lot of good news as far as projections for sales and, and the damages. Um, insurance companies are estimating um, uh, that between 10 and $20 billion in potential economic damages with an average of $4 billion a day caused by the shutdown, specifically of the subway system, people not being able to get into New York to shop. And then there's also being an estimated between 30, uh, 30 billion and 50 billion in potential total economic losses, according to the economists at the H IHS Global Insight um, Group in the United States. You have to remember that the damages have stretched over 900 miles and impacted about a third of the U.S. population. And also, this storm lasted a lot more, longer than most storms did. Um, Mark uh, Montagna, a senior analyst at Avondale Partners, actually was quoted as saying that specialty retailers will actually be the hardest hit. Um, he said that this group is likely to face much more um, problems than larger chains. Uh, you'll probably see a lot more markdowns and things like that because they have new stock coming in, of course, for Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving, November 22nd, is a huge shopping moment um, in the United States. And so those are the companies that are going to be hardest hit, the retailers that will suffer the most. Okay. And we've time for just one fashion flash this week, Jesse. What, what's it going to be? Um, well, let's see. I've got um, one more thing I wanted to talk to you about, uh, uh, about the, the storm, Sandy. Um, there were a couple of the retailers that tried to uh, kind of take advantage of the, the bad situation, one of which a perfect example would be American Apparel. The brand sent out an email blast promoting um, a special sale available to customers in the states that were affected by the sale, um, basically saying 20% off everything over the next 36 hours um, in case you're bored during the storm. And of course, of course, the black backlash online was immediate with a number of different um, people saying that um, people should boycott American Apparel for such kind of marketing, tasteless marketing uh, as that. Okay, so a, a big backfire moment there yeah. for that brand. Uh, and uh, you, you have you got our fashion yes, flash fashion for this flash, week? Of course, of course. Now, um, I wanted to have a fun little item for you. Um, as you are, might already know, the ex-editor-in-chief of uh, uh, French Vogue, Karine Reutfeld, recently joined forces with um, Harper's Bazaar International as a global fashion director. Um, she will collaborate with uh, Stefan Gann, who's the creative director of Harper's Bazaar US, on several stories a year, starting with the March uh, 13th uh, issues of over the all across the 26 international editions of, Baza of Bazaar, uh, and that special projects could include everything from uh, fashion shoots to covers. But she's also got another collaboration up her sleeve. Apparently, um, she looks like she might be launching a fragrance and makeup line um, soon. She has taken out a trademark um, for a whole range of beauty products under the name Forgive Me. So we'll see what that entails in the future, and I will let you know what that that brings when that's announced officially. Okay. Jessica and Michaud, thank you for joining us in studio, our fashion critic here on France 24. And that's all the time we have for this week. But for more, you can read Jessica Michaud's fashion reviews on nowfashion.com. And indeed, that's all from live in Paris today. But there's plenty more coming up from the team here in the newsroom. So do stay tuned to France 24.